Hey, how you doing today? I am Tequila Coleman. In today's video, I want to talk to our God ordained future husband and to help you to understand your wife. Okay. Um, so here's the thing, because I really believe once you understand, you know, um, just women in general, right, it will help you to understand what you need to target in prayer. And it will also help you to understand exactly how to respond to your wife when God sends your prodigal wife back home to you. OK, so let's talk about it. So just like a man needs respect, women need affection. OK, now one of the definitions for affection means the feeling of liking or loving somebody or something very much and caring about them. So as women, we have that affection need on the inside of us and the way how our husband can meet our affection need, you know, is by giving us attention, is by making sure that we feel protected by our um, husband. We have to know that we are number one in our husband's life, um, and we have to feel like we are a number one priority, okay? Because it's not enough at times for you to say you're my number one, but yet we don't feel it, right? when your wife in a certain situation and she call on you and you tell her, okay, wait so that you can go and take care of something else. She's not going to feel like number one. Okay. So she must feel like she is your number one in your life. Okay. Um, another way how a husband can meet his wife affection need, um, words of affirmation. So tell her she's beautiful. She's special. Call her a queen. Um, you know, remind her of her word. Uh, tell her what she means to you, you know, highlight to her what she's great at, right? You know, we need the words of affirmation um, too, you know, and we want to know, you know, exactly. We want we want to hear how, you know, um, our husband see us. You know, we want to hear that. It motivate us and it, and it will inspire a woman to, you know, continue to bring her best self, you know, to that marriage, okay? But we also need support. So another way husband can meet their wives' affection need is by making sure you support her in everything, right? Um, support her in, you know, her decisions. Support her in her career. Support her. Always have her back, right? You know, support her when everyone is standing up against her, you know? Um, that's big. And I'm going to say this, because if your wife is dealing with any type of rejection or abandonment wound and and even though she's a prodigal right now, I'm going to tell you this because you have to understand this. No matter what is coming out of your wife's mouth, right? She can tell you she don't want this marriage. She want a divorce. You know, um, you know, she's moving on. She can say all of this. But I'm going to tell you something. In the back of her mind, because most women won't say this. I'm guilty of this. Most women won't say this. But in the back of her mind, she's hoping and praying that her husband do not give up on her. She's hoping and praying that even though I, even though out of her mouth she's saying she want a divorce or she's moving on or she could even be with a counterfeit. Even though she's saying these things and acting this way, in the back of her mind, she's hoping that her husband will fight for her. She's hoping her husband will never give up on her because, because all of the other people from her past has given up on her, right? So... This is where your discernment is going to have to kick in that. And you're going to really have to know your wife's history so that you know exactly how to respond to her. Okay. Uh, but like I said, meeting your wife affection needs. She got to know she's number one in your life. She must feel protected. Okay. Because that goes back all the way back to her father, right? Whether your wife had her father in, in her life or not, father you know, are the, are the protectors of the family, right? Fathers give identity. Fathers provide, right? Fathers are the ones who, who are the first example the daughters, you know, um, see, you know, in a man, right? So the father is the one who set for the daughter, this is how a man is supposed to treat you. This is how he is supposed to handle you, talk to you. You know, fathers tell the daughter, you know, this is valuable, so don't give this away to anyone. Just save this for your husband, right? And... And so if your wife's father wasn't in her life, if he was absent or uh, abandoned her or whatever the case may be, you know, that means she's lacking protection. And that's something she really does desire. OK. And so and she's going to desire this from her husband. Right. So 
and, and let me say this, because if you don't make her feel protected, she's going to slowly lose respect for her husband over time. And she may not be able to articulate this, but I'm speaking from experience, okay? So understand when we talk about affection, your wife needs to feel protected. She needs to know, okay, um, you have her back. You support her, right? She needs to feel like your number one queen, okay? She needs to know if she's in a situation and she called on you, you have her back and you're going to drop everything and run to her rescue, okay? Because we look at y'all as our, we, we want y'all to be our hero, you know? Um, another thing you must understand about your wife is, um, she wants you to listen. She don't always want, um, uh, women don't always want our husbands to fix our problem. If we bring a problem to our husband, the more than likely we want you to just listen. And we also want you to engage in conversation with us because we have to talk. We got to get it out. So <laughs> don't immediately go into trying to fix the problem. No, talk it out. Don't be so logical. Be understanding. Give her understanding. Give her consideration. You know, and she's looking for some time to talk. So she got to talk it out first. She's going to need to talk it out a few times because she'd already talked it out with her friend. Then she's going to bring it to you. So she want to talk it out with you, right? And then she might circle back around. Now let's figure out how to fix the problem, okay? And I know that might drive a man crazy like, look, <laughs> Let's just go ahead and tackle the problem, right? But this is how we are, right? Your wife needs you to understand her because you can buy her all the things in the world. You could be a great provider, but if she feels like you don't understand her or if she feels like you set on misunderstanding her, again, you're not meeting her affection need and she's going to resent you and turn away from you. She, it's like she's going to start getting distant or she might get quiet and start shutting down. Okay. So make sure um, you got, that's why the Bible, you know, um, commands the husband to love their wives. It's just the only, the only thing is the Bible just don't go in details on how the husband, how, how to accomplish this. Right. But this is how you love your wife. You love your wife, you know, by meeting her affection need. And then not only that, your wife has a love language, right? Dr. Gary Chapman has a book called The Five Love Languages, right? Uh, the five love languages are affirmation, words of affirmation, physical touch, quality time, acts of service, and receiving gifts. So it is the husband's job to learn his wife's love language, okay? Um... And when you learn your wife's love language, then you speak it every day, okay? Because as you begin to speak your wife's love language of quality time, she's going to reciprocate respect right back to you. And so it's like, you know, now both of you are, feeling, are being filled up with love and respect, right? So we have to get an understanding of these things, okay? Um, and let me just say this because... You know, for some of our God ordained believing husband, you know, your prodigal wife, they have a counterfeit, right? I need you to understand why your wife has this counterfeit in her life. It's, it probably have anything to do with sex, okay? And I'm going to say this too, because most women, they wasn't really taught or raised, you know, um, to understand themselves. And so your wife, she could, if she don't, if she doesn't know, um, if she doesn't know herself or if she's not in tune with herself, she will misinterpret a affection, that affection need. She might misinterpret this affection need that's screaming and yelling for attention. She might misinterpret it for sex, right? So, again, when when the husband is meeting the wife affection need, she have no reason to go elsewhere, because the need is already being met. It's like a gas tank, you know, um, the car need gas, right? And you know how the gas tank is on E or halfway or full. Again, when your wife start complaining, yelling, shutting down, she stopped communicating to you, that's letting you know where her affection tank is at. It's probably at halfway leaning towards E, right? So these are all clues. That's not for you to, you know, match her energy. No, that 
all of the, the the shutting down, getting quiet or snappy or being disrespectful, these are screams of, I want you to see me, you know, I'm over here feeling empty. I'm feeling like my husband doesn't care about me or love me, right? Or like I don't matter to my husband, right? These are screams for your attention. So this is where, um, you know, you have to, this is, I'm giving you to understand this. So I really want you to study your wife, study everything about her, you know, what makes her respond, right? I really want you to do this. So when you're protecting her, see how she responds. When you're giving her words of affirmation, watch how she responds. Watch her face, how it lights up, right? Or watch how she gets so motivated, right? You give her, her you call her a queen. Now she's motivated to do something else, right? Or uh, just your loyalty, you know, watch it. Study your wife because you're going to learn a lot about her, Okay. Um, but understand the counterfeit is there because that counterfeit is more than likely meeting one of her affection needs, right? I stayed with an uh, ex from the past. I knew that relationship was over, but I stayed with this individual because he made me feel protected. That was, I loved that because I never, I had never felt that around my own father. And so even though I knew that this man was Mr. Wrong, the fact that every time I would be around him, he made sure that I was um, protected. He made sure that I was okay at all times, you know, um, and whenever I would need something, he was the first person. I mean, he would always answer the phone. So I held on to that. And that's what your wife would do with the counterfeit. She would hold on to whatever that one need is they meeting, you know, and overlook all the other stuff, right? She'll overlook all the mistreatment, the cheating, all because maybe the counterfeit make her feel like number one, or maybe the counterfeit is protecting her, make her feel protected, or maybe the counterfeit give her the communication she's looking for, right? And I'm not sure if I talked about this, but another thing when we talk about that affection need, um, when your wife presents to you a problem, she don't immediately want you to go into trying to fix that problem. She wants you to listen and then also engage back and forth with her in conversation we as women we need to talk <laughs> we got to get it out okay we want you to listen we want you to you know talk back you know engage in that conversation we're looking for that connection okay after she is able to get it all out because she's gonna talk it out with you she's gonna talk it out with her friend and then she's gonna come back to you now she's ready to solve the problem okay so don't immediately assume she wants you to go into mr fix it no, she's looking for a connection. She want to talk it out. She want to hear what you think, your thoughts, right? She want to tell you her frustration, right? She want to get it out, okay? Um, let me see, what else? And she also want to know that you care, okay? Uh, I know for some men, it's hard to be vulnerable. You know, I know, you know uh, a man can provide. He can, you know, protect. You know, he could do all these things. And in your mind, you're probably thinking, well, this is communicating to my wife my love for her, but we need to hear. We want to hear sometimes. Not every day, but we want to hear, you know. We want to hear you say, I love you. We want to hear you say, you know, or tell us how much how much we mean to you. We want to hear that, you know. Um, And so understand that, okay. I'm trying to see. Let me see. I, I talked about the support, affirmation, attention. I'll give her understanding. Loyalty, okay? We need loyalty, okay? We <laughs> need loyalty, okay? And then th you got to study your wife because if your wife is a loyal person and if you break that loyalty, she may never trust you ever again, okay? And then again, if you break that loyalty, you never know how that's going to affect her. You never know what is going to trigger in her. It might trigger the times when, you know, other exes from the past wasn't loyal, right? So we want to make sure that we are, you know, just being loyal, okay? Because that I'm big on loyalty, you know, even with my friendships, I'm big on it. You know, you lie to me, I'm done. You know, I cut you off. Um, and, 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 and that's how it is for some people, you know, because they have been hurt for, um, they based on how much they've been hurt, and if they value loyalty and the and but they and they extended loyalty to you only for you to give this loyalty back, 
they could you can immediately cause your wife to shut down and just cut you out of her life real quick because of this one mistake. So again, it's all about studying your wife, understanding her, making sure you're meeting that affection need, also learn her love language. Okay. You do these things, okay. Um, you want to have a happy wife. Now, here's some prayer points, okay? How did you pray for your wife? Because, again, some of our God or day believing husbands are standing for a prodigal wives. So, of course, you want to pray. You want to rebuke all counterfeit, um, the other man. You want to rebuke, you know, um, these spirits in Jesus' name. You want to rebuke the seducing spirit, right? Uh, any spirit that are seducing your prodigal wife away from God, away from you, her husband, you know, trying to seduce her with money, trying to love bomb her, trying to seduce her with material possession. You want to rebuke all these things in Jesus' name. You want to um, also pray and ask God to heal your wife, mother, and father womb, okay? Um, and let me say this because there's, there's a few women, you know, who have just been hurt by, like, all the men in their life, right, to where their heart has now went numb, you know, and or cold, or it's just hard, right? When she get to you, and you might be trying to figure out, well, what have I done to her? And nothing. It's the fact that her father rejected her, her brother rejected her. You know, she probably was rejected by her children's father. You know, it's just a history of man rejecting her, right? And so she she's unable to even receive her husband's love because of this so you want to target if you know this is your wife history you want to target her heart in prayer you want to begin to pray and ask god you know heal my wife um of this mother uh, of this father wound heal my wife you know from all the times she was rejected and hurt by man in her family in her life father you want to begin to put the word on your wife so the book of Job tell us that thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. Meaning you, when you decree a thing, the thing is the word of God. It shall be established. So we're going to decree in Zechariah 36 verse 26, where it say, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. So father, I decree that you are giving my wife a new heart and a new spirit. You are putting within her in Jesus name. That's how you want to do that. Okay. Um, and understand and know that God is going to honor your prayers. Right. Um, also begin a decree, you know, according to the, um, Ephesians chapter five, verse 33, that, you know, um, uh, it talks about, wives men um wives are to respect their husband so begin to decree that you know i decree you know my wife respects me as um her husband in jesus name i decree proverbs 31 verse 10 that god has given me an excellent wife i decree proverbs 19 um, verse 14 that god is giving me a prudent wife in the name of jesus christ i decree according to proverbs chapter 12 verse 4 that god is giving me an excellent wife and she will be the crown of her husband's head in the name of Jesus Christ, right? So you want to put these prayers over your wife and begin to target her heart, but also pray and ask God while she is away, meet my wife affection need, Father. Meet her affection need. Give my wife the attention she's looking for. Help her to feel protected, Father. You want to target her heart and ask God to meet her affection needs so that she doesn't go looking to a counterfeit to meet these needs, okay? So this is the purpose of why we pray and ask God. And this is also for my believing wives who are listening. If your affection need is screaming and you're like, I miss my um, God or name prodigal husband, you know, and, and you know, you you would know when that affection need is coming up. Begin to pray and ask God to meet your affection need, right? And I'll take it a step further. As you begin to get in tune with yourself, women, I want you to begin to understand how your affection need shows up, right? Because for me, um, it don't, I don't really go through this anymore, but it used to show up where I wanted to just be around that masculine energy, right? And so... I will put myself in, you know, like situation where I know I'm about to encounter a man, you know, not necessarily to, to date him or talk him, but I just wanted to be around some masculine energy. I've probably been around women all day long, 
right? And so I understood myself. I understood when this feeling is coming up, that's not for me to go get on a dating site. It's not for me to call up an ex. This is telling me, this feeling is telling me I want to be around masculine energy. So I always had this one male friend. So sometimes I call him and I would say, hey, you know, we just talked for about 30 minutes. He met that need without him even realizing it. Right. So just start understanding how that affection need, you know, show up in you and how you can begin to meet your own affection need until God, you know, send your God or name prodigal husband back to you. OK. And, and and this is all around, you know, if you need attention right now. OK. Well, what are some things you could do for yourself that can help you, you know, to get the attention that you are seeking? Right. If you need words of affirmation. OK. Write down your, you know, words or affirmation. You can begin to speak of yourself, you know, begin to call yourself a queen, call yourself beautiful, you know, um, tell yourself how great you are, right? We got to learn how to meet our own affection need versus looking for it outside of ourselves, okay? So that is it. I am Tequila Coleman. I'll talk to you all real soon. Take care.